head circumference is an important part of the pediatric neurological exam. And essentially what you want to do is measure from uh, the front of the forehead all the way back to the occiput and the greatest diameter with our cooperative model. And then record that value and then compare it to normal growth charts. So the mental status exam is also an important part of the neurological exam. In a nonverbal patient such as this one, sometimes you have to be a little bit creative. So, Kayla, come here. Come here. So follow the command. Sit. Sit. So we can clearly see that the patient follows commands quite briskly, and in, therefore language is at least somewhat intact in this patient. Today we're going to test tracking and extraocular movements on Michaela. As you can see, she tracks really well <laughs> in all directions. She says that she there's no evi it. there's no evidence of nystagmus or any extraocular palsies. So another part of the neurological exam is hearing, uh, which is the eighth cranial nerve. And to test it in our patient, you can see if she localizes the sound, which she does quite briskly. <laughs> Okay, uh, important part of the neurological exam is the mortar exam. The first part of the mortar exam is check the bulk. The bulk looks, um, looks both symmetrical on both sides. And then after that, you check tone. You can check the legs here and here, here. And then you see, since she's not moving right now, we can check for the motor power by having her stand up. Kayla, can you stand up? Kayla, stand up. There is she. She's able to stand on all four. And she's got good tail power. Yeah. <laughs> So the next part of the neurological exam is assessing sensory examination. And in our nonverbal patients, we can do this by assessing withdraw to tickle. So Kayla. Does that tickle? There we go. Michaela. Okay. Tickle, tickle. There we go. And there we go, we see her withdrawing to tickle. <laughs> so 
So for coordination in gait, uh, sometimes uh, patients will be less cooperative, but oftentimes an object that the patient desires can be useful in the exam. And we are looking for appropriate uh, stride length, as well as symmetric and not wide base, as well as ensuring that uh, gait is smooth without any sort of shuffling or uh, ataxia or unsteadiness. Excellent gates. I'm going to use my friendly tiger to check Dr. Waldron's optokinetic reflux.